Everybody loves a perfect theme song A melody that stays inside your heart You might have a nice show and others may think so But if you want a great connection right from the start Then you gotta have a perfect theme song So everyone can sing along from home And while they are singing the ratings you'll bring in all because the melody is stuck in their head You can make the bridge sound Jewish That would be fine Long as it's familiar but newish Everyone's falling in line All because you got a perfect theme song Accompanying the audience for years And when the show is over it won't be the end because the perfect theme song's a life-lasting friend And speaking of friends, here's your host and MC. Cause Mondays with Marcus is now a live stream Whoa, 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 yeah Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode, our second of Mondays with Marcus, a live stream of consciousness. Hello to everyone on YouTube. Hello to everyone on Facebook and wherever else you're pirating in from. Um, this uh, this has been such a thrill and uh, a brand new sandbox for me. And I can't thank you all enough for jumping on board. Uh, forgive the pun um, as I venture into the world of live streaming here. Um, the feedback from last week has been really uplifting and beautiful and fun and challenging and great. Um, and uh, so many people were like, well, why are you doing this now? Why, why now? And, uh, you know, that's something I, I really wanted to speak to here um, since that's what this, this forum is really for. Uh, this was a moment that um, I didn't want to get ahead of in my life um, because simply because the opportunity was there. Um, it wasn't something I had connected to, um, being, you know, on camera, um, in my, in my home studio, um, which is where I welcome you to, um, as you can see around me, um, and this, uh, the process getting here, um, I wanted it to be organic and I wanted it to really be, uh, authentically connected to what I'm doing now. So that's, that's why it, it took me, uh, Till now to to come uh, to come up with this idea and this concept and and the reason I wanted it to be this kind of a conversation is uh, because I I mean like everyone else I miss I miss the artist community I miss I miss my people I miss being surrounded by music as I was pretty much every night of the week um, before things shut down and uh, and so I wanted to figure out a way that I could connect with other artists and celebrate what they're doing. Um, and connect with the audience as well, and kind of put it all together in one. Um, and so that's that's where I uh, I finally came to this concept for uh, this live stream of consciousness, where it would be a chance for me and other artists to uh, just kind of give everyone a little peek behind the curtain, what our experience is like, and what it's been, and what it'll be like moving forward, and who knows, and what will that transition be like. And so we're going to get into that throughout this series with different guests each week. And, um, and I think it's going to be a wild ride. And I think it's, uh, I hope that you find it meaningful. I hope you find it healing. Um, and, uh, because you are the, uh, the third wheel of the stool, uh, that we all are sitting upon here and it doesn't, uh, the show doesn't exist without you. Um, and not just from, uh, a consumption point of view, but uh, but it's your your questions and your interaction via the comment box, uh, which uh, we'll talk a little bit more about later. Um, but your comments and questions are a crucial part of this uh, for me as well. And it's 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 what I was hopefully um, that's what I was looking forward to most. Um, and it's what filled me up with hope. So that's a little bit about why I'm doing this, where I am. Um, and uh, we can get into more of that a little bit later. Um, I couldn't do any of this alone. Um, I tried. Um, I did. And uh, it's funny when I when I had a first conversation with this gentleman uh, that I'm about to introduce you to. Um, and he uh, he said and I told him what I wanted to do. And I said, you know, I was thinking about, you know, managing this all on my own. And I had pretty much been well rehearsed enough, I thought, to to turn all the knobs and push all the buttons uh, needed to operate a live stream. And uh, and he 
you know, is a master of the, the, you know, the tech side of life. And, and so he said to me, what on earth were you thinking? And, uh, I said, uh, maybe I was still taking a big bite out of the apple, I guess, but it's a really yummy apple. So you couldn't blame me. Um, but, uh, but he, he's been an incredible, uh, godsend, um, since we started working together on this project and, uh, we have worked together in the past before, uh, we met in Cortland. He's a salt of the earth, big hearted guy. And, uh, he's super fun to work with and incredibly talented. Please. I'd like to introduce you to my cohort here. Uh, my partner in crime, uh, Mr. Seth Asa. Come say hello for a quick second, Seth. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing great, Seth. How are you doing? Doing great. It's a it's a kind of a gray day here in Pennsylvania, but nice all all the same. That's all right. Gray days. It's gray here in New York City as well. Uh, I got out and I I went for a run in the rain earlier today. Uh, it was sort of misty, and I, I I love that kind of you know when the weather is you know, alive and, uh, alive enough to, you know, where it's safe till the, to be out in it. And, uh, but that's great. So did you have a nice week? Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. We had some nice weather here. We had some relaxing time. We had a really nice thunderstorm last night. I really like nice thunderstorms. So we got a little of that last night, which was very nice and, and been watching a couple of movies. It's been kind of a lazy week, actually. <laughs> there you go. And well deserved. Good. I think that sounds comforting. Why? Indeed. I don't remember the last time I sat back and watched a couple of movies. I, that's who knows. But you know what? Is it maybe when we finish here, I might do that. Um, All right. I, we did actually talk about one though that I did recently see that I will plug because I and when I mentioned it, I didn't know if you had seen it and you saw it and you had the same reaction that I had after I saw it. It's a great uh, documentary film called My Octopus Teacher. And yeah. This film, uh, it was so, it was just beautiful. It's a beautiful relationship and it's a beautiful story being told and the way it's shot. And obviously the, you know, it, the uh, cinematography is stunning and it's all for the most part shot by one gentleman. And he had this incredible journey where he bonds with an octopus and over the course of the year. Um, and I, I highly write, and they have not given me a single dime to say any of this. <laughs> No, it's great. And it's, it's, it's like, uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit beyond your regular nature documentary. I, I would highly recommend it. It definitely is. It's so much more, it's not narrated like that. You know, you're, you're brought in to the point where, well, I, I if I keep talking, I will, I will <laughs> give too much away. Go out and get this film or watch it wherever you go out and get this film. That's, that's updating myself. Go to your nearest blockbuster and, <laughs> or Mike's video rental and uh, pick up a copy of this VHS. No, it's a fantastic documentary. I think it's on Netflix or one of the one of the streaming services. Anyway, um, well, thank you, Seth, for stopping in to say hello. Uh, yep. Seth will be here for those of you who are watching at home. Seth's going to be here the whole time. So if you feel like there's something you need and and you know, question that I won't be able to answer, uh, you can feel free to to ask Seth. Maybe that'll be a bit we'll put into the show. Ask Seth. Uh, I have to check with him before I do that and call his agent and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I mentioned before that we have a comment box. I'm going to just remind you all that right now again. Um, that's important because we are going to have a little Q&A later on um, with my guest, who I'm about to introduce to you very proudly. Um, but I just want you to kind of navigate that now if you're new to live streaming and, and whatnot. Um, I want you to find the comment section and we'll be uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it as well uh, so we can flash your questions up on the screen for everyone. And uh, and without further ado, my guest today. Oh, boy, what a great uh, musician and human being I have to share with you today. Um, he is is a composer. He's a pianist. Um, and he's he's taken all of his influences and put them in a big big melting pot together. And what he's, what has come out has been, it's so inspiring. And I first met him, um, through the club, through room six, two, three, uh, and he came in and played, um, and I think I'd seen him on the scene a few times before, but we never really, you know, connected. And, uh, and then when I heard him play live and he, his, his quartet filled up the entire club with this beautiful, I mean, the club was shaking, it was vibrating and with, you know, beautiful positivity and everyone was just feeling great. And it all comes from, you know, his heart, his writing, his inspiration and his influence and his process. And so I, I really wanted to, uh, 
highlight that uh, in in him and and share Steve Sandberg with you. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Mondays with Marcus, Steve Sandberg. Hey, Steve. Hey, Marcus. How are you All doing? Right. I'm doing well. How are you, sir? I'm great. I hope I hope I could live up to that introduction. I was, <laughs> I was like, wow. And Very you kind. Are, you already have. It's real. It's real, folks. Um, this gentleman is, uh, you know, you you have this. Um, what I love about your music, I'm just going to get out and just sort of smother you with a few more things, and then we'll get into some some questions. But I I love how authentic your process has as always seems to have been, and and if it hasn't, we're catching. I'm catching you now at a moment when you know there is there's a the element that there's a not as, as overwhelming of a performative value to or quality to your music as much as it's like that happens naturally. You know, you can sometimes tell when certain artists are like they're really performing and there's a, you know, high entertainment value in that. Um, and then there's like that real authentic, like like meaty, really organic um, beauty that you bring to it um, that just kind of just wraps everyone up in a blanket of you it's pretty awesome to experience so with that um i appreciate all that and i want to get into um your background and everything that you have brought to music um but first you know i want to i want to just know where we're finding you you know 2019 was going along you were playing everywhere and um and writing and working and then you got stopped in your tracks from my perspective it didn't stop you 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 were like oh live streaming here we go that's what i'm doing uh -huh. Is that what it was like for you, or did you have a moment? Yeah, well, it was very, very organic, actually. Um, you know, I, I had COVID last uh, February, mm -hmm. and it was super scary because it was when it was just coming to New York. And uh, luckily, I had a mild case. I got, I, I was just severely ill for about a week and a half, but it was so scary. I, I had a, a friend from Italy, a, a pianist who is uh, uh, Marco Gennaro who is, as a friend, he was sending me these really scary texts saying, don't go out, stay inside. You have no idea how bad this is. And um, it, was, it was really very scary. And uh, when I, when I, I was so uh, grateful to, uh, to have recovered on my own. And um, I went through this kind of pink cloud for the following two months or so, even though it, it took me physically about two or three months to regain my physical strength. But uh, oddly enough, it, it felt very liberating. And I was doing, even when I was sick with COVID, I was putting these little videos on Facebook. And it was great because I thought, this is so wonderful. I don't have to brand myself. I don't have to be slick. Maybe the whole world is ending. And, and I remember getting up one day and um, I, I start, I, I'm obsessed with the Chopin Mazurkas and I, I learned a new mazurka. And it, it was, it brought me such joy. And I just put it right on Facebook. And that's what I said. I said, we don't know what's happening in the world, but here's, here's some joy straight from Chopin. And uh, I wasn't over concerned with how well I was playing it. And it, it was so real and, and I loved that. Um, so, uh, and, uh, and then um, after that, uh, the, the pianist Jim Riddle, was incredibly generous and he introduced me to uh, uh, Soapbox Gallery, uh, Jimmy Greenfield's place in Brooklyn. And I've been able to do a live stream from there about every six weeks. And then Jim also introduced me to uh, the Global Music Foundation, which is a streaming um, thing based in Ireland. And uh, I've just been keeping myself busy pretty much with that. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's been very organic. And, and I feel very blessed to, uh, to have uh, had these connections. And in fact, now that the world is beginning to, uh, you know, uh, normalize a little bit and, you know, we're starting to think about venues opening up, part of me is, is kind of going, oh, no, I have to start like, <laughs> to get gigs again. And all, ah. yeah. Well, you know, that brings up an interesting question because I wanted to know, and I caught your early stuff, the clips that you were posting, you know, every now and then as this people were starting to figure things out. And and I saw that and it was so inspiring. And I and I didn't I had no idea that that you were you were 
struggling with COVID at the time too. And yeah. I'm so sorry to hear that. And I'm so glad that you are, I mean, you look great. You look like you're feeling great. Um, I first want to say, I mean, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. Fine. Vaccinated. Oh, um, fantastic. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, well, um, I want to, but, but that's, that's, that's so cool that you found those, those early videos. There was something about those videos. I remember I played a Chopin nocturne and, you know, it, I, again, it, the gift of that period was it, I was so unconcerned with presentation and how I would be received. And I remember I, I played the Chopin nocturne and, you know, usually I would, I would really, you know, listen to it a lot. And I just put it up there and, a friend of mine who was a ballet dancer said, that was amazing. You played it so incredibly slow. And what, what a gift that was. And, you know, I think that was all a, a gift of that time. It was just just be very free and open in the moment. So tell me what, um, I mean, you obviously had a positive relationship and connection with that process. Um, how will that stick around in your life if it will stick around in your life? even though things are opening back up again. I mean, the broader question I was going to ask you is what will stick around from this period of isolation and lockdown. But as you, you know, zoom in on this, you know, the specific, the, the freedom that you felt to just post you without having to, you know, fluff it up with pizzazz. Um, do you well, that's that something that I've, I've lost girl. actually, because um, I actually tend to be a bit self-conscious and, um, I, I, I actually want to get back to that. And, and I think that was a great gift and I, I have to consciously get back to it. I just had a conversation this morning with, uh, Andrew, you know, Andrew Volper, the jazz singer. We sure, are kind of on the show in May. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. We're yeah. like accountability buddies. We talk a lot and, you know, we, we, we had this deep conversation about, um, reject getting rejected in this business which happens all the time and things not working out and the importance of doing it and the importance of you know we're all flawed and, and we're all developing and the importance of putting yourself out there and um and i thought you know this is the kind of stuff i really should be talking about in public in 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 videos and 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 i kind of let my you know, very quickly after that period, I let my self-consciousness kind of clamp down on me again. And I, I want to, I want to burst through that. Mm, I like that image of you bursting through that. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I did want to mention to our folks at home who, who may not be familiar with you. Um, I can't, I don't have time to list all of your credits and your amazingness. I tried and just <laughs> do it with adjectives and how you impacted my life. But in digging in, you you did have a history working with Nickelodeon, and I did. and I wanted to touch on that because you worked for these two wonderful shows that I and I know kids who who watch these shows, uh, Dora the Explorer and Go Diego Go, and you you were the music director and composer for these shows, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so my question for you about this, and you can say anything you want about the process too, but um, what did it feel like as a writer, knowing that as you write this music? Um, for this show, instantaneously, you are going to immediately impact and connect with kids all over the world. Yeah, that was that was great. That was the best thing about it. Um, uh, I I felt so grateful to be working on these shows that were so positive, and you know, I felt so happy that I, I wasn't like writing, you know, for violent movies or horror shows or anything. It was something so positive, and and these shows really. Um, Dora was it turned out to be extremely important for uh, a lot of children. Uh, she she was a big resource uh, for kids, and um, I, I I later on was able to to see that even more. And uh, I I was just so grateful that I was able to do that. And I tried to um, <clears throat> in the music that I was writing, I tried to kind of uh, include some sophisticated elements of music that you might not normally find in a preschool cartoon. Um, because I felt, oh, hey, here I had the chance to expose children to classical music, to uh, uh, harmonies that are a little more complex. And although a lot of music, I always tried to uh, include something. Once I wrote a, a kind of 12-tone Schoenberg kind of cue for it, and I actually got away with it. And that was great. And, uh, wow. you know, the biggest compliment I got for my writing was from uh, 
uh, my friend Zé Luis, uh, the Brazilian sax player, he was telling me that he has a son who's very into music, and his son, who was very little at that time, he was watching cartoons, and he loved the uh, Tom and Jerry cartoons, which was in the old tradition of cartoon music, which was more sophisticated. And he al always used to tell Zé, Daddy, why don't they write music like the Tom and Jerry music anymore? And he saw a show that I wrote the underscoring for, and he said, Daddy, this is like the Tom and Jerry music. Beautiful. That's beautiful. I, I think that's it's fantastic. The the that that's what struck me um, most about that process. And you know, as a writer, it's like when you sit down to write and you don't know, you know, who you're gonna connect with and whatnot. And to be able to know right away it gives such. I imagine it gives such purpose behind uh, what you're doing. Um, there, I, I also I wanted to. I mean, there's so much about your influences I wanted to touch on as well. But I um, I wanted to get to to you playing. I want to give folks a, a taste of you playing and in your uh in your arranging style and I um, mean what you're doing with your concept is you were you explained to me a couple of times that you bring uh, so much of your classical training to your contemporary instincts and and I know you have a background in raga music as well which I want to talk about uh, just, just later. Touch on it. <laughs> I don't I don't play you know that much about it but I I, I know enough to really know what they're doing when they're, when they're doing one of those concerts. I well, I studied, I studied about a year ago, I studied raga music as well. Uh, really? With, yeah, I studied North Indian classical uh, raga with uh, Sylvia Nakash. And I, I was checking out, and I saw you studied with... Uh, uh, who who uh, said Mashkur Ali Khan? Yeah, uh, Mashkur, uh, right, Mashkur Ali Khan. And um, I think there, I mean, I imagine, like the world is so, the raga world is gigantic, and I studied intensively like the very tip of the iceberg but sylvia is an incredible uh very free artist and, and a master of of raga and uh but it, it i have felt an immediate connection to it and so when i saw that in, in when i was reading uh something about you and um and then playing your album alaya through my mind it, it's so much connected for me and and whatnot and uh so anyway but i i wanted to I want to turn the floor over to you. I'd love to hear you play um, and anything that you wanted to talk about in terms of your process in, 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 in how you approach classical music now and bringing it into your contemporary styles. Oh, great. Well, I'd, I'd love to. And, um, you know, uh, after Dora ended, I, I, was, uh, I had a lot of space in my life and I was thinking, well, what am I going to do next? And I, I decided to go back to my roots, which was uh, playing classical piano, which I've been doing since I was four. And um, I, I, I went back and turned out to some ser serious study with uh, the, the wonderful teacher Seymour Bernstein. And um, I, I, on my uh, 60th birthday, I said, as a kind of gift to myself, a creative gift, I said, you know, I'm going to try a concept that I've, I've often thought of. I'm going to do a concert where I'm going to play classical piano literature and I'm going to put a quartet together and I'm going to write pieces using influences from all the music that I love, jazz, Latin music, Balkan music, Indian music, all kinds of improv, uh, Brazilian music. And, um, you know, and write pieces based on the classical things with room for improv and see if that works. And it, it was really a, a wonderful thing. And I was uh, really blessed with it. I happened to put this immediately I found the right cats which was the, the band that you've heard that we played at room 623 with uh, Zach Brock on violin and Mauricio Zatorelli on drums Michael O'Brien on on bass and um, it, it's been a very fertile path that I've been pursuing for uh, the past five or six years and allows me to, to continue to play classical music and you know basically I will uh, play a classical piece that I love and then study it kind of extract the Harmonic juices, sometimes the melodic juices, and write something based on it in in uh, in a different style. And uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna play a little bit of a, a Bach Sarabande from the French Suite in B minor, and then a piece that I this is actually my latest composition that I wrote based on the Sarabande. It's in the, it's in the style of a Brazilian choro, a slow choro, and I, I call it choro banji. Mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take your right hand and your left hand, put them together as we listen to Mr. Steve Sandberg. Mm -hmm.
Wow, Steve. Uh, that's beautiful. Thank you. That is absolutely stunning. I, you know, I, I wish I, <laughs> how do you, I want to ask, how do you deal with like when you, when you finish performing something like that and I want to, I want to just have a tidal wave of, of applause and audience reaction <laughs> your way. And I'm sure the, the comment section hopefully will, you know, do some justice if, for those of you who are watching at home, but um, I just, you know, I, a laugh track or a, not a laugh track, but an applause track doesn't do it justice, but. Um, well, I, I just feel so relaxed and, and comfortable and warm with, with you here right now that it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's fine. There's no problem, especially when I play well, you know, like I, I, I thought that was okay. So, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cool, yeah. you know, but it's yeah, hard man. Like sometimes when I play a whole, um, I mean, soapbox gallery is great because there's usually a few people there and uh, there's the tech people you're in the room with people when i do the thing uh for for ireland uh sometimes there's just no feedback whatsoever and especially when it when i feel like i've messed up and i don't like it, it there's just this overwhelming silence well let me tell you <laughs> that let me tell you that you know you are touching people in beautifully healing ways right now oh um, again and, and some of the comments and even even some texts that are coming in right now they're just private messages saying this is so beautiful and inspiring and relaxing and and i think that you know i i personally i think that this and we could talk more about this at the after party but i think that this method of connecting with the audience will will uh will still be around i think that being able to flip on your device and get an up close personal shot of you playing like you were just playing live and knowing that at any moment you'll finish a song and turn to the, you know, turn to the camera and tell me about it or tell me what you're feeling. I yeah. feel like that's that one-on-one. -on -one, I think there still may be a place for that. Um, when even, Oh, I agree. I, I think it's, yeah. it's going to stick around. And even as far as concerts, I think many venues are going to go to the model of even after this whole thing is over, um, a, you know, there'll be a combination live audience and a live stream. 100%. And, uh, we're going to do it, gonna do it six, two, three for sure. Yeah. And the live stream will be limited. You know, it, it might be, you know, you have to buy your ticket for the live stream or, and maybe it'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, many venues are already doing the, you know, it, it'll be available to access for the next two or three days kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that beautiful piece. Um, we're, we're going to take a, a 30 second transition to get into the after party. Like I said, I said to all my guests, if you want to change your, your coat, your shoes, your socks or nothing at all, uh, you're, you're welcome to do so for those of you who are at home. Um, you can, uh, grab yourself a glass of something a little spicier if you'd like. Um, but before we do, I want to throw up some information about Steve Sandberg. Um, so Seth, if you could toss up the, uh, graphic there. Thank you so much. So this is Steve's uh, Venmo, obviously. If you like what you heard and you want to show Steve some love, um, please uh, send him a few shekels or more than a few. Um, send him lots of shekels. Send him every bit of shekels that you have. Shekels, by the way, for, for those who are not Jewish or don't know, is uh, it's Israeli currency or well, anyway. So dollars, money. Um, and then, of course, he had those two performances coming up on uh, April 24th and June 3rd at the Soapbox Gallery which uh, they can find all the information at stevesandbergmusic.com. Did I get it all right? Is that everything? Yeah, That's and of course, the, those right. concerts are going to be live streams. Yes, those conference, those are live stream concerts. You're not going to show up in person um, just yet. Um, now, folks, I hope you've been enjoying the heck out of your Monday here. Um, Steve, don't go anywhere. Stick around. Um, and if you have been enjoying yourself and you want to see this series continue, um, here's a way you can support us. Um, and you, you have options either via PayPal or Venmo here on my end as well. And of course, um, there is uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel, which is always Wonderful to connect with you there as I post a lot of fun videos of my own stuff um, from time to time. Now, um, as you may know, um, I have some CDs. Now, those are available as well. Now, these these things, they were around a while ago. They may seem like relics to uh, some people, but I've got about five of them here. Not about, I have five of them. And um, along with those CDs come some additional merch to support this album. This is a project that I did for our veterans. Um, it's called Carry You On. And the album is, is all original music that I wrote based on conversations that I had with our military community. And it was all in service of bridging the disconnect between civilians and military families. 
Um, and I found that music, as we all have experienced, I think at one point or another, is a is a meeting place for for many people from all walks of life um, and and all thoughts, uh, you know, and however, you know, whatever your belief systems are and however they differ, um, music is one place that we've always been able to find uh, some commonality. And so I wanted to use that and we um, were performing out uh, with that project quite a bit. Um, after we made that album, um, and uh, and then of course things shut down, and we had to we had to change uh, things up a bit. But I did team up uh, during the process with a veteran-owned um, apparel company named Oscar Mike, and uh, they helped me create these incredible hats that say "Carry You On" on it. And you can see that. And then if you flip underneath, it says "Bridge the Gap," which I don't know how to get it in the but anyway. You can pick up a, a "Bridge the Gap" a "Carry You On" hat. We also have the t-shirts and voila, these t-shirts, pretty awesome. And they're super comfortable. And there are many people who, um, who can attest to that. And I think that some who are there watching and can put in the comment box, but wait, there's more. We also have hoodies because, you know, you can't have, uh, you know, hats and t-shirts without hoodies. So there's the hood. Anyway, um, if you'd like to, to get any of that, you can head on over to my website. I think Seth, we have a graphic for all that. Look at that. The Marcus merch. You might think I have a thing for alliterations, um, but that's all the information for all of my albums and the uh, apparel. We don't have a graphic for the hoodie, which is why I had to show it to you. Um, so, folks, I, I hope that you have had an incredible time here. That's going to do it for the first part of our show. Um, I hope you enjoy getting to meet Steve Sandberg. Uh, he's an incredible guy and, uh, I wish him all the best and we're going to get to talk to him a little bit more because we, uh, have an after party coming up next week though. I want to let you know, um, on the 19th, we have, uh, I'm going to welcome Monica Herzig to the program, an incredible, uh, entrepreneur, composer, producer, uh, just a, a beautiful human being, what she's done for the music world, the jazz world, and the world in general. Um, I mentioned the after party. Steve's also going to share with us something he's never told anyone else before on camera. And he's going to sing a little more for us. But first, we've come together for a moment today. Young ones and some who would rather not say. Finding connection isn't easy, I know. And that's why I created this show. See you next week. Unless you stick around for the after party. Bye-bye. Everybody loves a perfect theme song. A melody that stays inside your heart You might have a nice show and others may think so But if you want a great connection right from the start Then you gotta have a perfect theme song So everyone can sing along from home And while they are singing the ratings you'll bring in All because the melody is stuck in their head You can make the bridge sound Jewish, that would be fine. Long as it's familiar but newish, everyone's falling in line. All because you got a perfect theme song, accompanying the audience for years. And when the show is over, it won't be the end, because the perfect theme song's a life-lasting friend. And speaking of friends, here's your host and MC. Cause Mondays with Marcus is now a live stream. Whoa, whoa, whoa,
Welcome to the after party, folks. Life may be golden, life may be grand. You make the rules of the game. When you are old and you don't understand why nobody's holding your little hand, just take a deep breath and go for a walk. Now you may be gloomy when you're alone and there's no kiss on your cheek. When you are blue and you want to go home, and sit in a room that you feel is your own just take a deep breath and go for a walk cuz when you're walking your mind can clear out all of those thoughts stuck in your head Everyone's talking about the troubles we face in the world. Now life can be sweet, just follow your feet. Maybe one day we'll all gather around and change the rules of the game. Hunger and AIDS would never be found in a world without hate. What a beautiful sound. Just take a deep breath and go for a walk. Cause when you're walking your mind can clear out all of those thoughts stuck in your head everyone's talking about the troubles we face in the world now life can be sweet just follow those feet well, maybe one day we'll all gather around and change the rules of the game. Hunger and AIDS would never be found in a world without hate. What a beautiful sound. Just take a deep breath and go for a walk. Come on and take a deep breath and go for a walk. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the after party. There's no reverb in after parties. There was for a moment. Well, this has been so much fun, and uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed yourself. Um, what's different? Everyone says, what's going to be different about the after party? Well, um, as you can see, we changed the set. I'm in a different location now. I'm wearing a different outfit. Um, if you weren't here for the first part, you don't know the difference. Um, but if you were here, no, I actually, I didn't change uh, too much. I, I might down the road, change my hat or something. I don't know. Change my hat, change my shirt. It'd be so hard to change my hat because like, I don't have that many. I, I'd have to go into the other room and, oh, wait, what's that over there? Wait, what? That's crazy. How did I do that? So I meant to do that actually during the, during the break, but uh, I didn't get a chance to. Now it's officially an after party. Uh, I did mention that uh, you're welcome to go grab yourself a cocktail. Um, Cheers. Mm, I'm telling you, what I'm drinking never tasted so good coming out of this original mug made by my mother. That's right. This is a Maryland Goldhaber original mug here. And if you like this mug, 
everything's it's product placement here. If you like this mug, there's so much more where this comes from. Um, it's uh, an incredible uh, hobby that it started out as a hobby that she uh, picked up a few years back. And um, and then she started producing these incredible pieces um, and uh, for our, for our family and for our friends. And then she started selling them. And it's amazing. And you can go to potterybymarilyn.com to check out uh, a little bit of her connection uh, collection can I, and find some connection too. Why not go with whatever comes out? I always say. Um, anyway, so um, that's uh, that's where we are here at the after party. I do want to mention that part of what we're going to uh, accomplish here is a fun Q and A with Steve Sandberg, who is still here as my guest tonight. Um, but it does uh, rely on your questions. Um, so please put those in the comment box, and Seth will make sure to put them up on the screen for all to see. Um, if you have any questions for Steve or me, if you like, but. I'd prefer your questions go to Steve. Um, the comment box always also gives me a chance to say hello to to whoever's out there because uh, all I see is a number. It says like four million people or something like that, and I can't, I can't possibly know, um, not yet, but it will one day. Who knows? Um, and uh, so I'd love to if you want to say hello. I kind of got my eye on the comment box as well. Uh, I know uh, that there's some family watching tonight, which is great, and uh, some friends and. I love uh, being able to connect with you all this way as well. Um, so without, oh, I know what I wanted to mention to you. Gosh, this is huge. Um, normally, if we were having an after party, we'd be hanging at room 623. Uh, so that club right now, obviously, we had to shut down um, shy of our one year anniversary, which would have been April 5th, 2020. And when I launched this program, um, it was on April 5th last week, which would have been our two year anniversary. I like to have that synchronicity. That was that was nice how that worked out. Um, but we'd all be hanging out at 623 right now. And for those of you who don't know, Room 623 is a speakeasy jazz club that I launched back in the uh, beginning of 2019. And um, and there it is. Look at that. Seth right on cue is putting up a little snapshot of what the club looks like on the inside and, and some of the incredible moments that we had. Uh, it's a small, beautiful, cozy room um, that was just uh, filled with positive healing energy um, all throughout the week. Uh, we are looking to reopen. So if you, as you see, there's a PayPal link there. Um, we'd certainly love any support you'd love to th uh, throw our way to make sure that we can do so strongly and, uh, and safely. Um, everyone's been asking, when, when are you going to reopen? Now they can do this, they can do that. Uh, we are going to reopen. I'm not putting out a date yet, um, but uh, it's probably looking at some somewhere closer to the late fall um, that time of year, again, to make sure that we can do it safely and that, uh, that everyone can relax as much as they possibly can. Um, when we give, uh, live music back to everyone and man, that's going to feel so good. Uh, a friend of mine was just, uh, telling me about how he misses that feeling of the vibration of a horn just blowing in close proximity. And, um, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> I feel that too. I actually took up the saxophone um, many, many years ago just for practicing. So don't get any ideas, folks at home. Um, but uh, I, I, right now, I just do it for myself, and um, and I'm grateful for that um, to be able to have have that uh, connection as well. But uh, and that that and and being in lockdown has has uh, you know allowed me to practice more uh, regularly too, which has been fun. So um, anyway, enough about me. Um, I, I look forward to gathering with you all again in 623 again soon. And speaking of 623, Steve Sandberg is still with me. Steve has played at 623. And look, there's oh, look at that. And he's changed his shirt and he's given <laughs> us a new look. And and um, party look. it's the after party, man. Totally. Um, I have a question for you, Marcus. Okay, hit me. Uh, do you have any uh, talk show models that you're modeling yourself on? I mean, for me, Steve Allen comes to mind. I feel oh, like I'm cool. revive Steve Allen show. Oh, that's very sweet, man. I absolutely I love Steve Allen, and um, I, I've seen a bunch of his stuff. And uh, I, you know, I kind of picked a little bit um, from the the if you know the classics in in that time period. You know, mm -hmm. I grew up I grew up watching Carson. That was that was who I grew up watching, um, and then continued on into a little bit of Letterman and Leno, um, and. And now I love what's out there now too, um, but that that was a go-to uh, for me was Carson, and and then you know also just being around the the Mel Brooks, Sid Caesar, you know that kind of that air, that energy 
um, I think those were pretty big influences uh, for me as well. Um, but that's really sweet of you to to bring up. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, all right. Um, but that's the only time you're going to get to turn it around on me. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I, I want, there's so much more, there's so much more to you than there is to you. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to just dip into the Raga stuff for you because I wanted to know what your process, what your journey was to Raga. And then, and then you were like, you had a moment, I imagine, where you, you said, you know, this, this is, this has to be brought into what I'm doing. What was that experience like for you? Oh, that's interesting. You know, I've, I've gone through uh, two phases of my life where I felt like there was no music I wanted to listen to. And um, I came out of them uh, with different, uh, in different ways. But I think I, I reached a certain point uh, when I, uh, just before I got into Raga, when I just didn't want to listen to anything. And I was interested in improvising and I was wondering if there was a way to improvise without having to do it in the jazz language. And I happened to see that Michael Harrison was giving a rocker class and I went and I was really enraptured by the music. And I spent nine years studying, uh, you know, I didn't, I, I wasn't that uh, dedicated a student, but I did dabble uh, for nine years in the, uh, uh, the tradition of uh, Ustad Mashkar Ali Khan the Kira and uh, it, it, I, I just loved it. And uh, it was, but I tell you, you know, what I, what I came out of it really with more than anything else, really more than the music itself was how the music sits in that culture. And uh, that's really been the most important thing. The idea that this is something that's worthy of dedicating a life to and, um, and, and the respect that this music is treated in the history behind it. And the fact that I was studying a tradition of music that had been passed along from father to son, generation to generation, for 13 generations, unbroken. And, um, you know, I have a quote on my practice space from Glenn Gould that I'm going to read right now. Glenn Gould said, the purpose of art is not the release of a momentary ejection of adrenaline but rather the gradual lifelong construction of a state of wonder and serenity. And uh, there's a, a writer named Bryn de Uland that I quote a lot about this too. And she taught uh, creative writing. And she, she, she has a quote in her book, If You Want to Write, which I find so marvelous. She says, why, why is it important for people to be creative writers or creative musicians? And her answer was because nothing lifts people up from being mindless consumers more than having something like an art uh, to devote yourself to. And that's ultimately what I took away from the Raga. And um, I, I think it, it's so important in a world where, where there's so much political division, there's climate crisis, there's uh, the, 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 the dark path is, is very obvious. And I think what may not be so obvious is the place of the arts in the past, the path that could lift us out uh, and upwards. And uh, and if, if this is making any kind of sense, it totally it, is. In fact, it's a perfect segue to what I wanted to ask you follow up, oh, which is, um, you know, artists are often looked to um, as healing instruments. No pun intended. Uh, but throughout times of crisis, right? So there are you know, a crisis hits, first responders rush in and they're incredible and they instinctually save lives immediately and, and or get people to life-saving situations immediately. And, and then, then the next big wave of energy is often from artists where people are calling on artists or artists are coming out with telethons and concerts and benefits and, and trying to raise awareness and, and whatnot and, and, you know, be activists. So, to that extent, and in this healing nature connected to the healing power of Raga, which, as I was taught, is, you know, there's so much healing power in in these melodies. Um, and it's, it's not, you can't really even define it. But do you consider yourself, and if so, how, um, a second responder? Oh, I never thought of that. Um... You know, I, I, I tend not to think in broad categories like that, but yeah, I think um, everyone, um, 
kind of has a choice, you know, uh, about are, are we gonna are we gonna use our life situation to lift up, which usually takes a little more dedication and discipline and work than just kind of going with the flow and let it, let thing slide. So, I guess I'm I'm a second response responder in that I show up and I play my instrument, and um, I teach, and that's been actually one of the uh, um, Wonderful things about this year, too. I've been teaching a lot on Zoom and it's really developed my capacity to teach because teaching on Zoom is hard. You have to be, I think, much more focused. Uh, and uh, I've, I've been working with some teenagers and been working with some people in their 70s also. And I, I think I feel like a second responder as, as that. And you know, with, with, with the teenagers, I feel like I've, even beyond the music, I've been really really able to help them with how to focus, how to focus your attention, how to learn something new, how to, and this is akin to meditation practice, how to, you know, tame the wild monkey of the mind so that, you know, when, when people are learning piano, er, er, what everyone wants to do is to play as fast as they can in a really sloppy way and think it's going to get better. And my role is kind of like to go, slow down, mm. pay attention slow down, pay attention, which was, by the way, the, the first thing that really attracted me to the raga, the alaps of the raga, where you're just singing so slowly. I thought, wow, how great is that? Oh, man, and, I... and, and some of my other students, I'm, I'm really helping people relax and breathe. And, you know, to, to play the piano well, you have to be very flowing and relaxed it's almost like tai chi or something and i'm it's just so good you know, you're saying this because there i happen to know there's a five-year-old watching right now who i've been teaching which is about the extent of my ability in piano teaching but i no i i mean i uh I, he's watching right now and and we talk a lot about that very we talk about the relaxed nature and and, and i i we talked about um jellyfish and and yeah. as a way to connect and say, you know what, there's, or there's like where crabs or like our lobsters are gripping and they have their claws. So we don't want that. We want, you know, more of a, a flow, you know, to your, it's a very physical, you know, experience playing the piano. It's not just, you know, the technical element and the music theory and whatnot. Um, but I'm glad he got to see that because now it's yeah, not just you know, crazy Uncle Marcus. By the <laughs> way, I, I talk about the octopus too. And I oh, sometimes sure. to say, you know, your fingers are like the tentacles, tentacles of an octopus. And when you're going from, uh, let me see my fingers. Uh, when you're going from one position to the next, you're not just kind of blindly moving, but you're shaping your tentacles in the shape to arrive at the next position to play the next phrase. Yeah, man, it's beautiful. We, we've mentioned octopus too, which is great. And he loves octopuses. And this is a show about octopuses since we just plugged my octopus teacher before. See, this is a through line, folks, at home. we stay, Yeah, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> that's why you brought it up. Um, so, uh, all right, we're going to do a quick lightning round. Um, and before we do that, actually, let me check in with the Q&A because I want to see if we have any questions from people uh, at home. Um, so first, a big shout out to, oh, that's great. Uh, Christopher Prince Barry, what a wonderful cat saying hello, hello back. And Elizabeth, hello, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for watching. And we got my family tuning in. My dad has a question. All right. It's a, my, my dad has a question here. What was it like to play with the great South Indian violinist, Dr. L. Subramani, Subramaniam? And, Subramaniam. and would you team up with him again? Oh, I, I, I hope so. It's, 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 I would love to. Uh, it was amazing. And uh, the first time I played with him was uh, up in Canada. And uh, what, what an amazing, wonderful person, a, a real guru. And uh, um, uh, in fact, I'll never forget when in the first rehearsal, um, you know, mo most of the musicians in the band were, were Indian. And um, I was brought in to play some keyboards and my friend Pramik Russell Tubbs was playing some sax. And uh, Pramik has experience in that world too. He actually played with the Mahavishnu Orchestra. And uh, mm -hmm. so we, were, we all got set up to rehearse and Dr. Subramanian came into the room and the in Indian musicians actually prostrated at his feet and touched his feet. And I was like, wow, I've never seen that before, but such a lovely, modest man. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, he uh, 
wow, I'll never forget. He played an alap uh, at to begin the concert, which is just a very med meditative unfolding of the raga. And uh, I'd never heard anything like like it. It was uh, absolutely thrilling, and mm. uh, and and quite beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Well, if you if you do, be, be sure to personally let me know so I can, you know, I have a little connection to my dad um, that I can, uh -huh. you know, kind of an express route. So I'll be sure. And he's like the world's greatest audience member. So uh, I will uh, I will definitely let him know. Um, all right. Well, questions, folks are, are I think they're a little reserved today with regard to questions, which is OK. Um, I got a lightning round for you prepared and then I want to hear you play again. Um, so are you ready for the lightning round? I am. Okay, favorite superpower. Ah, favorite super uh, Claire audience. Hmm, Claire audience. Yeah, that's uh, that's when you could hear things from the other dimensions. Wow, I'm gonna need a reference. Who has that superpower? Oh my god, all of my comic book people are gonna be like, "Why you don't know who has oh, that superpower?" I I don't know. Oh wow! All right, Steve. Well, get, get busy on that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you got a whole franchise ready for you. All right, next oh. lightning round. Let's go. You prefer late nights or early mornings? Early mornings, actually. Do you call them sprinkles or jimmies? Sprinkles. Do you call it soda or pop? Soda. One candy for the rest of your life. Oh, uh, uh, Goldberg's peanut chews. Very specific. Love yeah. that. All the secrets of the ocean or all the secrets of outer space? the ocean i'm with you brother all right one person alive or dead to go for a walk with wow hmm lightning round oh, well, uh, 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 oh my god i'm, I'm not i'm no not wrong doing answer. ramana maharshi that's per i was thinking you were uh, who <laughs> 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 That's great. All right, lightning. Here we go. It's being recorded. We can rewind and watch it later. Last one, fantasy concert to attend. And you can give me an opener if you'd like. Oh, uh, well, um, who would I like to see? Uh, uh, Vladimir Horowitz. Beautiful. Up close Beautiful. And live. All right. You made it. You made it through the lightning round. I usually, I for a long time, when I used to think about my fantasy concert, I used to say it would be uh, like uh, Peter Gabriel, uh, Michael Jackson, and opening for Sinatra. I was like, if wow. I could have like a three-part hour long of each of them, that would be a, a great combo for me. But um, my next real fantasy concert is going to be Steve Sandberg. So, um, Steve, if you would please grace us with another one of your tunes, and you're welcome to set it up however you'd like. Well, I'd love to. Well, this is an original tune, but it's, it's also modeled on something. There's a, um, uh, a wonderful Mark Johnson album, Mark Johnson, the bassist. Uh, and I, I forget what the album's called, but there's a tune called Faith in You, and I just love it. And uh, it's it's an album with Joey Barron, Bill Frizzell, and Pat Metheny. And uh, such yeah. a, a special, beautiful, light tune. And um, I, I was playing this tune, and then I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write something based on this tune, which is something I like to do. So I did. And I actually, a friend of mine who's playing drums with Ileana Elias, and Mark Johnson is married to her and plays with her. So I, I brought the, the lead sheet, and I went backstage, and I showed it to Mark. And I think he liked it because um, he's very, very quiet. And uh, I said, oh, you know, uh, I, I, I love this album. And I, I wrote this tune based on your song, Faith in You. So he, he took it, you know, and, and very quietly, he just, he just read it like it was a newspaper. Mm. And then he chuckled. And then he said, wow. but I think he liked it. <laughs> That's amazing. So this is new tune, and it's dedicated to Mark Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Sandberg. Thank you. 
God, beautiful, Steve. Absolutely beautiful. Um, again, I wish I could flood you with a with an, with an applause track. Um, <laughs> now, I'm curious, which was the part that he chuckled at? Oh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> uh, right on, right on, right on. Um, well, it's, that's that's a beautiful piece. Um, has that been recorded yet? No, not yet. Okay. Not yet. All right. Well, we'll stay tuned for it. As you can see at the bottom of your screen, some more information uh, ticking by about Steve. I want to toss up the, the graphic again so you can see um, how you can support Steve and all his beautiful music um, and uh, his upcoming shows. The Steve Sandberg Trio, the Soapbox Gallery, April 24th and June 3rd. And check out more information at stevesandbergmusic.com for additional live streams, et cetera, and so forth. Steve, this has been so much fun and I can't let you go without pointing out the Wait fact minute, that I'm you... sorry, can I just interrupt for one second? I just want to yeah. mention that uh, those two yeah. soapbox concerts, actually, they're not going to be with the trio. They're going to be two duos and they're, they're both going to be very special. Uh, April 24th is a duo with the great Brazilian accordion player, Vito Gonçalves. And uh, June 3rd is going to be a duo with uh, Jay Hogard, just an incredible jazz vibes player. And also I've got, if you go to my website, I'm giving a masterclass on uh, something I'm very interested in now, uh, improvising for classical musicians, because to those of us who came up with, uh, with music as classical players, it's often so difficult for us to improvise. So uh, I'm, I'm giving some master classes on that subject. Man, you're such a hybrid cat. I love it. It's like you're, <laughs> you're, you are. You're a gift to artists. You're a gift to non-artists. It's it's really a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for carving out some time. And what I was going to say is I don't want to let you go without letting folks know that in addition to all this, it's like you're your own infomercial. But wait, there's more. Um, you speak three languages, right? French. No more. Well, oh, four. There's I know about more. French. 
For, wait, French, Spanish, and Portuguese. And then I know you're learning Greek. Are you telling me now you're fluent? Oh, no, I'm not fluent. Not, not far from, far from. Well, I was going to... No, I, I guess that's about it. A little Dutch, a little bit of Dutch, a little bit of German. Ah, My problem is I'm very good with the accents. So when I start talking to people, very often uh, I, the accent is not detectable. So they think I could really speak. So they start and, and you know, two sentences in, I'm lost. <laughs> totally, man. I'm with you. Like in terms of the, the pronunciation, I always had much more success than with, you know, amassing a wide vocabulary of languages. So in the spirit of that, I would like to ask you to teach me one, one thing in Greek. Oh, my God. Uh, OK. Um, and remember, just... there are kids watching. I know that's yeah, you often okay, we won't go there. Um, <laughs> well, I one of one of the uh, nicest words is just Fharisto, which means thank you. All right, break it down for me. How can I say this? One more time? F, F Yes. Like E F F. And then there's this funny sound, it's like it's almost yeah. like the Portuguese initial R. F ha. I'm not sure I'm doing it correctly. I'm okay. making my F ha risto. F ha risto. F yeah, F ha risto. Now the question is where's the accent? You're challenging me. I've been neglecting my Greek. F ha risto. Oh. I think the accent's on the last syllable. So it's F ha risto. F ha risto. I, I F think so. That's good. But you got to, I mean, you are saying thank you. So I got to make sure and I don't sound angry when I say F Haristo. F -haristo. F -haristo. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. Now I, uh, I there's, there's going to be new meaning when I say oh, it's all Greek to me, but I uh, couldn't let that one go. Oh, look at this. Someone has put it. Wow. Now, is that amazing? I don't know if you're looking at the comment section there, but that's Seth. Yeah. Can you toss that one up on the, on the screen for everyone? That's, that's amazing. There we go. We have that for everyone at home. I don't know if you can see that, Steve, but now everyone can learn Greek. See how much you get here at the show? Oh, it's not great. entertainment. This is a, you know, life enhancing experience uh, with the transliteration. I love that. Um, well, Steve, thank you so much for, for joining me. Um, thank you, Seth. That's apropos segue to thank Seth for all your incredible support throughout. A round of applause, everyone. Put your right hand and left hand together several times for Seth Asa and, uh, Folks, thank yourselves. Um, this has been such a, a great experience, uh, another another fun time for me, and and great to to celebrate uh, this connection and celebrate a wonderful artist and Steve Sandberg. Um, we do have a feedback form because we want to know what you think and if you're enjoying yourself. And um, Seth's going to put that in the comment box for you. Um, so all you need to do is just do a little cut and paste. Um, we have that link for a feedback form, and that should pop up in the comment section um, pretty soon. And look, boom, there it is. And so you just copy paste, or I think you can even click right directly, and it only takes a couple of seconds. Um, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Please tune in next week, uh, April 19th. We'll be welcoming again Monica Herzig um, at 5.30 here on YouTube or on Facebook, however you like. Um, reach out during the week anytime. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, wherever you are, if you can't tune in next week, please make sure to stay safe, stay compassionate, and stay engaged. Have a great week, folks. Bye-bye. Everybody loves a perfect theme song, a melody that stays inside your heart. You might have a nice show, and others may think so. But if you want a great connection right from the start, then you gotta have a perfect theme song, so everyone can sing along from home. And while they are singing, the ratings you'll bring in, all because the melody is stuck in their head. You can make the bridge sound Jewish, that would be fine. Long as it's familiar but newish, everyone's falling in line. All because you got a perfect theme song, accompanying the audience for years. And when the show is over, it won't be the end, because the perfect theme song's a life-lasting friend. And speaking of friends, here's your host and MC. 
Cause Mondays with Marcus is now a live stream.